So a couple of years ago, I saw these speaker boxes that people had made out of ammo cans, like this one on that's for sale on Amazon, or this one that's for sale on this company's website, or this one that's for sale on eBay. And I thought that sounded like a really cool idea. But, you know, I subscribe to the philosophy of these two guys that anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So I was on vacation and I went by an army surplus store and I bought a 20 millimeter ammo can. And let me tell you, this thing is big. This thing was 17 inches wide, 14 inches tall and seven and a half inches in depth. And it weighs in at a whopping 20 pounds, which was actually its undoing. But I'll get to that in a few minutes. So this thing wasn't much to look at on the outside. You know, it was a typical metal ammo can. It was kind of beat up, had some paint marks on it, things like that. I mean, even after I got the speakers mounted in it, uh, got the power plug on the back, and um, I made a paracord shoulder strap to carry this thing around with because, like I said, it was pretty heavy. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like what they say about people. It's not what they look like on the outside. It's what's on the inside that matters, and this is what's on the inside. I'll go over the details on this in just a few minutes. But first, the build. So the first thing you have to understand about these boxes is that they are just big metal cans. There was just a big metal box. So it's essentially like a big metal drum. So my first thought was standing waves you know if i've got music playing and we start generating standing waves inside this box the best thing to get rid of those is going to be some kind of insulation whether that's foam or like a, a batting material like you find inside speakers so i decided to take some uh, open cell foam exercise mat and cut that to fit and then use this heavy duty double side tape to uh, essentially tape the uh, inside and completely cover the inside as well as the inside of the lid with that material and so i did that i went through the whole process of cutting that put that in, um, put uh, speakers in it, and listened to it, and it sounded great. The problem came when I did my mock-up. I basically just had an amp, and this, I had the speakers mounted, and I had the amp and the power packs laying inside the box, and I didn't really have a good way of mounting those. And so ultimately, I decided to scrap the foam idea and completely change that. So the next thing that I did was I used some MDF sheets that I had and I cut those to fit uh, the long sides and then as you can see here fit those in then I cut out a notch for the AC power as you can see here fitted that in and slid that in around the power and then did the sides and I had to round the corners because the corners of the box are not completely completely sharp edges they're actually rounded and so got everything fitted and ultimately ended up gluing the edges of the wood to keep it from vibrating uh, when the uh, speaker was being used so at this point I had a nice solid foundation that I could use to mount the internal components uh, as well as something that was going to provide a pretty good sound dampening inside so I took a piece of high density plastic uh, that I got from Amazon I believe and cut it using a Dremel tool to fit down on top of that lip and as you can see I cut it a little long so I had to trim the edge of it off a little bit um, and then I cut a uh, two and a half inch width off the end and got a piece of piano hinge so that I could actually use that to access the internals um, laid that out to check the the uh, the size and everything and then i used a pop riveter to just rivet um, to use pop rivets to actually connect the two pieces together and then i did a dry fit you can still see i hadn't trimmed it in this hadn't trimmed it yet when i took this picture but after i trimmed it everything looked really good so the next thing that I did was I lay, started to lay out the components. Uh, as you can see here, the display and the Raspberry Pi that I'll talk about in a minute. And then some of the other components that I have, like the switch uh, there in the center, the red uh, chicken head knob, and a couple of USB, the round USB connectors. 
and uh, a handle over there on the right that I used to open and close the unit when I needed to get in it. So I marked all those and basically started uh, laying everything out with blue painter's tape to try and prevent the edges of the black plastic from getting really sharp and, and flaky and, and potentially even cracking when I cut it. So the next thing I did once I started cutting was dry fit the Raspberry Pi touchscreen and then I uh, drilled out the holes for the USB mounts. Um, I went ahead and mounted the USB ports. So here's the USB ports mounted with the caps flipped up just to see what they looked like. Then I dry fit the USB ports and the Raspberry Pi. Um, laying out the other pieces to make sure they're all going to fit with the components that go on the back uh, because there are things that get mounted behind some of these devices including a control board for that switch. So the next picture here shows the um, input selector switch, the chicken head knob mounted on the board as well as in the right hand corner up there um, the panel that I call the, the power panel. Um, so here you can see where I was prepping to drill. I had removed the chicken head knob because it has a board on the back uh, and I was going to be drilling holes. That I've got some holes marked out there for the additional inputs that um, I'll go, kind of go over what those are here in just a sec. So as you can see I finished getting the holes lined up and I mounted the input that is an RCA input and the other two inputs I used uh, quarter inch jacks which are panel mount and they basically convert on the back end of the cable to RCA so here you can see I've got those quarter inch as well as the RCA inputs mounted and then here I've got basically everything on the surface mounted and then I just did some cleanup on the back end to get all the additional pieces mounted on the back for all the controls um, all the control boards and things like that that, that um, that mount on the back sides of these things. So this is basically just a dry fit of the completed front part of the panel uh, just to check and see how everything laid out and check the access and make sure I didn't need to raise or lower the panel because um, the panel is recessed down within there to um, so that when you lift when you take the lid off that um, stuff's not sticking up and that I wanted to make sure it wasn't too far down as well. I did a few dry fits before that, but this was just kind of like a last, you know, kind of hurrah to check it out and see how good it looked. So I'm going to go ahead and describe all the different pieces on the panel and then I'll go um, go into the guts of this box. So as you can see here, this is a official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen. Uh, mounted on the back of that is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and it contains a 128 gigabyte micro SD card with the Volumio operating system installed. I had an additional 128 gig USB drive, flash drive attached with an additional 128 gigs of music storage as well as program storage for using RetroPie. I had another 128 gig micro SD card that I had RetroPie installed on and um, I'll, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. So just below the um, touchscreen, there are two weatherproof USB connectors. Inside each of those is a pair of USB ports as you can see here. Uh, just in the center of the bottom of the panel is the four-way input selector knob. Uh, on that input one was the audio output from the Raspberry Pi. Inputs two and three were micro, or excuse me, were uh, three and a half millimeter jacks so that you could plug, you know, a phone with a regular headphone jack or um, any kind of music player with a, with a headphone jack like that. Uh, or, you know, even if you had some other device that you could connect to that, you could use that. All right, so now my favorite part, the power panel. So as you can see, there are two circular connectors at the top, uh, one of which on the top right has a voltage indicator, and basically that is an indicator of the power of a battery pack that was inside. To the left is an additional set of USB ports. Those were specifically um, powered by AC. They were not powered on a uh, battery because I didn't want to use the battery packs to charge devices. I wanted the battery packs that are inside just to power the devices. So again, I'll, I'll talk about the, the guts here in just a minute. So if you look at the three switches at the bottom, the switch on the far right that has no label on it, that's actually a three-way power switch. Um, up is input one and middle is off and bottom is input two. 
So when it was on the up position, that was power coming from the wall. As you can see here, that power came in through this fused um, AC input and went into that laptop power supply. So the switch when it was in the down position went into a lithium ion battery pack that I had stored inside as well. Um, the center position, although it says fog lights, um, that actually powered the Raspberry Pi and the touchscreen, which were powered off a separate battery pack. The one to the left, labeled LED light bar, that was actually fitting. That actually ran a set of LED lights. I had two uh, light strips, one along the inside rim to the left on the top that illuminated the panel if I were out in the evening somewhere where it was dark and I needed to be able to see um, to turn things on, turn things off, whatever, I could turn that one on. Uh, there was also a second strip on the inside, so if I needed to get into the box and do anything, um, pull out the battery packs, things like that at night, I would just turn that on and I could reach down in there and do whatever I needed to do. So the power from that first switch actually fed into this, which is a Class D um, digital amplifier. This is a two-channel, 50 watts per channel uh, amplifier. And that then fed into the speakers that were mounted in the front. Um, these are a pair of six-and-a-half-inch car stereo speakers, which I found were perfect for this application. They were just the right size, just the right power handling, and they sounded really great. So my ultimate goal for this was to uh, actually replace the amplifier, the two-channel amplifier, with a 2.1-channel amplifier that actually included a subwoofer output. And I had planned on mounting an 8-inch uh, automotive subwoofer on the back here. Uh, unfortunately, I never got around to doing that. All right, so on to the guts. Unfortunately, I never did take any pictures of the inside. So what I had to do was basically draw some diagrams of what the inside looked like. So as you can see here, there are three separate power circuits. So starting at the top, this is the, uh, the power panel on the right side with that three-way switch, uh, which switched from the laptop power supply coming in over AC and a battery pack that I put together of eight 18650 lithium-ion batteries. That put out about 27 volts, uh, around, I think it was around 3 amps. Uh, the laptop power supply was 27 volts at 3 amps, and that's why I tried to get the two to be about the same. Um, that went through that three-way switch and into the amplifier. Now, the amplifier had a max power handling of, I believe it was 32 watts, so I was under that. Anyway, so that fed the amplifier. That way I could run music and things without having to run the Raspberry Pi, which can be kind of power hungry, uh, which brings me to the next section. That I actually used an off-the-shelf uh, 20,000 milliamp hour uh, power battery pack, you know, that people use to recharge phones and things like that. And that had a uh, five volt output at a Three, I put three amps here. I think it was actually 3.1 amps, and that's enough to power both the touchscreen and the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, that that was great for what I used it for, and I got I think I got four or five hours um, out of that when I used that before the Pi shut down. Uh, and then there at the bottom is another battery pack uh, for 18650 batteries that I put together um, that went through that, that uh, switch on the left on the power panel that fed into those LED lights. So one thing that I had intended to do but never got around uh, around to was setting up where another circuit to where when the unit was on AC power, that that power was going to be split between the laptop power supply and a recharging circuit to recharge uh, all three of these battery packs, but I never was able to figure out a way to, to, uh, to do that. So I wanted to show what the input um, cabling looked like with the switch. Uh, maybe a little difficult to see in this picture that I drew, but but essentially at the top you've got the speakers that you know being fed by the amplifier, and then the input from the amplifier is um, uh, RCA that fed into a board that was mounted behind that input selector switch. It was actually powered, and there were LEDs that I could have mounted in the panel that showed which select 
which input was active and all that stuff. Um, I never did mount that. The um, RCA inputs from the Raspberry Pi ran into input one, the two three and a half millimeter inputs ran into two and three, and then just an RCA input ran from uh, the inputs there to input number four. That way I had basically maximum flexibility on any kind of input devices I wanted to connect to the unit. So what was the ultimate fate of this thing? Well, so when I built this thing, you know, it was a great idea in, in theory. Um, and at the time, these little portable speaker, Bluetooth speaker kind of things were almost non-existent. They had really just started coming out and they were really expensive. And most of them sounded like crap unless you spent, you know, two, three hundred dollars on one. So obviously I said, you know, I love the look of these ammo can speakers and I decided I wanted to build one of my own. And of course, like I said before, you know, I wanted to make it nice. I wanted to make it loud. I wanted to make it big. I wanted to make it sound good. Um, you know, these tiny little speakers that are in a lot of these, these portable units that you find out there don't sound all that good. So with, uh, with speakers, you know, for general rule of thumb, bigger is better. You know, if you have a tiny speaker, you're not going to get a very good bass response, which is why I wanted to go with the six and a half inch speaker. Um, once I got it, it sounded pretty good, but then I thought, you know what, I'll upgrade and add a subwoofer. And, you know, it just got to the point where the unit was already so heavy that it was a pain to carry around. I mean, when, it, when I finally decided to break it down, it weighed in around 40 pounds, I think, with all the equipment and everything in it. You know, and I used I used a really thick piece of MDF inside, which I probably shouldn't have done. Um, so there were a lot of things that I did that, you know, in hindsight, I should have I should have done differently. But but I really enjoyed it, you know, having Volumio, which is a digital jukebox running on the Raspberry Pi with a touch screen was great. You know, got a lot of got a lot of uh, good compliments on that. That was really cool. Then I could power that off, swap out the SD card um, stored inside the box. I had a remote control, USB remote control, and I could swap that SD card and put in the RetroPie, which RetroPie is a Raspberry Pi operating system that runs um, images, ROMs of games. It'll, you can play Nintendo games, you can play Nintendo 64, you can play, you know, pretty much any gaming system you can think of, you can play those games. And so taking this thing on camping trips was a lot of fun. So kids had a great time playing these games and things like that, but it just got to be so unwieldy to carry this thing around. So I recently got a 3D printer and actually used that to print uh, a stand for the Raspberry Pi, as you can see here, as well as a case that mounts around the display. And so this, um, the Raspberry Pi part of the unit actually is sitting on my entertainment center right now where I use it to play music, some of the music that's stored on the unit, but it also connects to my home network and plays music that's stored on my home uh, network attached storage device. Um, the Volumio application, as you can see here, is great. Um, you know, it, it um, has a great has a great feature set. You know, it's free and open source. I believe it's open source. It's free. I know that. Um, so, you know, it um, it's just a great piece of software, and I really enjoyed it. And um, I enjoy listening to music with it now. And so it, um, you know, it turned out to be really good, and it was a fun experience building the unit. Um, but so I mentioned that I purchased uh, ammo can at the surplus store. I actually purchased two of them, so I still have another one that I just use for actually storing tools and things uh, in the workshop in the garage. So um, you know, so it's not a total loss. I've still got the speakers that I can use in the car. Um, I've got the battery packs that I use for other things. Um, I still have the amplifier, and I may actually build a you know a small jukebox or something to actually keep in the house, um, in the living room, and actually just have the touchscreen jukebox there. But as far as portability and stuff, you know, it's it's just as easy to to go out and buy something nowadays that sounds good. That's going to be a whole lot lighter than what I built. So it was a great experience, and I really enjoyed it. So if you like this video and want more content like it, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you've got one of these kind of speakers, you know, maybe not to this magnitude, but if you've got a, an ammo can speaker that you built, um, share me, share it in the in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, I really do enjoy building things like this, and you know, sometimes the uh, the projects don't turn out quite the way you expect them to.